What would you want your child to be? Weak or alert? Lethargic or active? You are the one who determines the future of your child while she is still in your womb. So as soon as you come to know you're pregnant, you must take certain precautions. The government has ensured that there's an Anganwadi center in all villages and urban settlements. Anganwadi and Asha workers are local women chosen from your own neighborhood. Their suggestions and support will help you and your child to remain healthy. All services available here are free of cost. As soon as you come to know you're pregnant, register your name at an Anganwadi with an Asha worker or at a nearby clinic. Get a mother and child protection card from the Anganwadi. This card will have complete details on your health and that of your child. During your pregnancy, you must get yourself examined by a doctor at the ANC at least four times. Each time your blood pressure and weight should be checked. You need to get two inoculations of TT, that is tetanus toxoid. The first when you test positive for pregnancy and the second a month after that. For the first six months, take an iron and folic acid pill daily. It's necessary for you to take a total of 180 pills over the course of your pregnancy. Use only iodized salt for cooking. Iodine is essential for the physical and mental development of the fetus. This also reduces the risk of premature birth. Your food should be nutritious. This should include lentils, fresh green vegetables, fruit, milk and food items made from milk. During pregnancy you are eating not just for yourself but for the child you are nurturing in your womb. That is why you should eat at least 25% more than you usually do. Stay away from smoking or any form of tobacco use as well as from alcohol and other intoxicants. Rest for at least two hours in the daytime. Do remember to give birth to a healthy baby, the mother's weight has to increase by 10 to 12 kilos during the course of pregnancy. Now, an important point. Remember, one should become a mother only after attaining maturity. Teenage pregnancy is dangerous, even life-threatening for both mother and child. So girls shouldn't get married before 18 or become pregnant before the age of 20. You should also be aware that getting a girl married before she turns 18 is illegal. Despite all this, women don't look after themselves. 36% of Indian women are victims of malnutrition and 55% are anemic. If the mother isn't healthy, then this will definitely have an effect on the child's health. The child too will be anemic and will be underweight. The delivery may also be premature, occurring at 8 or even 7 months. If the mother's health is not alright, then there will be adverse effects on the child's health too. Malnutrition is a big danger for children. The basic development of a child's body and brain happens during the first two years. If the child isn't looked after properly during this early phase, she becomes malnourished. Malnourished children fall sick frequently with diseases such as diarrhea and pneumonia. These illnesses can be life-threatening. Malnourished children may grow in age, but their bodies and minds remain weak. Look after your children's nutrition. Only then will they become strong and smart and achieve great things. A newborn child's mother, father and other family members should never be negligent while caring for the child's nutrition and well-being. It's important to understand and remember the many aspects of this responsibility. Make sure 
that the child is born at the hospital. Only in a hospital can the mother and child get proper care. The child's weight should be checked immediately after birth. A healthy newborn weighs over 3 kilos. If the weight of the baby at birth is less than 2.5 kilos, it's considered a low birth weight child. Such children require special care, whether at home or at the hospital. But if the weight of the child at the time of birth is less than 1800 grams, then her initial care should be under a special newborn healthcare unit or a hospital. For one thing, temperature maintenance is very important. An open care system is available at newborn care units to help in temperature maintenance. All the lab facilities are available for checking for deficiencies in the child's sugar levels. If the child is having difficulty breathing, she's intubated so that the tube in her airways assist her in breathing. And then she's shifted to an intensive care unit. Intensive care unit shift kara jata hai. Family members and health workers have to work hard to look after such children. After the child comes home from the SNCU, ASHA workers have to continue visiting the child's home until she's a year old, conducting regular checkups and keeping a vigilant eye on the child's health. For low birth weight or sickly children, the ASHA worker will visit more frequently and until the child is two years old. As per the home-based newborn care program, ASHA workers must visit the child's home six times in the first six weeks after birth. Those responsibilities of the ASHA worker are a part of the national health mission. If your child's weight at birth is low, there's no need to be scared. Proper nutrition and care can set everything right. The need is to identify the danger signals promptly and immediately take your doctor's advice. But yes, to identify the problem, you need to be aware of the normal growth rates of a child. This is your child's developmental chart, also known as a growth chart. Your child's weight is recorded here. For a child with a birth weight of 3 kilos, this should double by 6 months and triple by a year. The children in the green zone are normal. Those who are in the yellow zone are low birth weight. They require a nutritious diet and extra care. But the children you see here in the orange zone must be looked after immediately as per the doctor's advice. The parents of such children should take the advice of the Anganwari worker or Asha worker. They might suggest taking the child to the nearest nutrition rehabilitation center. Follow this advice. These are for very severely malnourished children. We generally bring those children here who are not just severely malnourished but also have some medical problems such as diarrhea or pneumonia or children who are not eating or drinking anything. At the Nutrition Rehabilitation Center or NRC, the child's height and weight are recorded. The mid-arm circumference Another indicator of nutritional health is also noted. The child is given medical treatment and nourishment. Very often, a mother isn't aware how much food her child should be eating at this stage. So that information too is given to the mother here. That way, when they return home, the mother can look after her child properly in this regard. Families of severely malnourished children are also provided with extra portions of nutritious rations. If you're concerned about a loss in your wages because of your having to take time off to visit the NRC, don't worry. You will be compensated for this at the NRC and your child will recover quickly with the treatment and nutrition given there. Even after recovering, these children may fall prey to malnutrition again. That's why parents should regularly keep in touch with health workers. 
Until the child is six years old, her parents should avail of the nutritious food and supplements provided by the Anganwadi Center. Anganwadi centers also arrange for sneh shivirs or special camps for the love and care of malnourished children. If we want to keep our children safe from deadly diseases, then we need to get all their life-saving immunizations done in time. Every child should be immunized and protected from seven deadly diseases. Immediately after birth, the child should be given a vitamin K injection. After this, as soon as possible, the BCG inoculation, polio drops, and hepatitis B inoculation should be administered. During the first year, your child should be given polio medication as well as hepatitis B and DPT or diphtheria, pertussis or whooping cough and tetanus as well as measles vaccinations. Some state governments have started giving pentavalent shots instead of DPT and hepatitis B. These include along with DPT and hepatitis B, HIV pneumonia and meningitis immunizations as well. For this, you need to take your child to the local health center or Anganwadi. There, at 6, 10 and 14 weeks, all these immunizations are administered. At the age of 9 months, a dose of vitamin A and the first shot for measles should be given. Apart from this, booster shots, the second shot for measles and the second dose of vitamin A should be given to the baby when she reaches the age of 16 to 24 months. None of these doses or shots should be skipped. The information for all the shots your child will be receiving is clearly mentioned on the mother and child security card. You should keep it safe and follow all the instructions written on it. If your child gets a high fever after receiving the shots, there's no need to worry. Just contact your health worker immediately. Mother's milk doesn't just strengthen the bond between mother and child, it's also integral to the mental and physical development of the child. The mother should start breastfeeding the newborn within an hour of her birth. This ensures that her breasts will produce sufficient amounts of milk for her child. Right after birth, the mother's first milk would be thick and a bit yellow in color. This is known as colostrum. This first milk should definitely be given to the newborn. This milk is rich in proteins and many other nutritious ingredients and protects the child from several diseases and infections. Besides mother's milk, the infant should not be given any water, honey, herbal tonic as in ghutti or jaggery and the like. Mother's milk is the best possible and most complete food for the baby. So the infant should only be given mother's milk from birth up to the age of 6 months. She should be given nothing else, not even water. Lactating mothers should take special care to maintain hygiene to prevent the transfer of any infection from the mother to the child. Mothers should also remember to clean their breasts well while having a bath. Each time a mother is to breastfeed her child, she should first wash her hands. Adopting the correct posture and method while feeding the baby is also very important. The mother should hold the baby close against her while feeding her and provide support by cradling her in her arms. The baby's face should be towards the mother's breast. The baby's chin should be touching the mother's breast. The dark part of the nipple should be inside the baby's mouth. The mother should continue feeding the child till she removes her mouth from the mother's breast of her own accord. If the child appears to be still hungry after the milk in one breast is depleted, she should be fed from the other breast. The baby should be fed at least 8 to 10 times in a day or in other words after every 2 to 3 hours. If you are unable to breastfeed your baby properly, seek advice from Asha and Anganwadi workers or your doctor. The child signals that it wants milk by catching hold of mother's breast. Sometimes the mother is scared to let the baby bring its head too near, afraid that its nose would get blocked. 
making breathing difficult. To avoid this, she holds just her nipple towards the child by putting her fingers around the areola. We call this caesaring. However, this means that the child ends up putting pressure only on the nipple. As a result, the milk doesn't flow and the baby gets frustrated. If you are a working mother or have to stay away from your child for some time, then you can express and store your milk in a clean utensil. If it is kept covered in a clean utensil in a cold place, this milk remains consumable for up to eight hours. This expressed milk can be given to the baby from time to time. The baby receives all nutrients from mother's milk, which is why the diet of a breastfeeding mother should consist of appropriate amounts of food from the four food categories. Category 1, grains like wheat, rice, millets, ragi, etc. and lentils. Category 2, vegetables and fruits. Category 3, milk and dairy products. Category 4, edible oils, nuts and oil seeds, jaggery and sugar. The breastfeeding mother should increase her food intake to 25% more than her normal diet. Like pregnancy, breastfeeding the child can also be a cause of mental stress for the mother. That's why her home and family environment should be kept stress-free and pleasant. The husband and other members of the family should assist the mother of a newborn in her chores so that she gets enough time to rest. For a few months after the birth of the child, husband and wife should avoid physical intimacy. Besides ensuring an average of 8 hours of sleep at night, the mother should get at least 2 hours of rest during the day. If you are taking any medication, consult an ASHA worker or your doctor about whether you should breastfeed your child. Tobacco and other intoxicants are a definite no for lactating mothers. Right from birth, keep ensuring that the baby's body heat is maintained. A newborn child loses body heat rapidly and this, if ignored, can sometimes prove fatal. You should not bathe the newborn baby for at least a week after birth. During this time, he should be cleaned with a soft, moist cloth. And dried with a soft, dry cloth. Make sure the baby does not catch a cold while being taken here and there. Depending on the weather, Take a soft towel, a sheet or a blanket and fold it slightly at one corner. Keep the baby's head on the folded corner. Now cover the baby's body like this. And then cover its feet. Now wrap the remainder of the blanket around the baby's body. Remember to wrap the baby completely but keep her head uncovered. One way of maintaining the child's body warmth is called kangaroo mother care or KMC. In this procedure, the baby is made to wear a diaper and a cap. Mittens are used for hands. If small mittens are unavailable, you can use socks for the hands as well. And the feet are covered with socks. All these things help retain the baby's body warmth. For this, you may take the help of an ASHA or health worker. The child is kept in between the mother's breasts and covered with a cloth or blanket.
This procedure is very beneficial for low birth weight babies. With family support, the mother should ensure that she has adequate time for KMC. During each KMC session, stay in this position for at least one hour because the baby's closeness to the mother is the foundation for her health and development. It's been often said that a clean child is a healthy child. Maintaining cleanliness can protect the baby from numerous communicable diseases. A newborn child initially passes a dark colored stool. But don't be worried. This black or greenish brown sticky substance is known as meconium. After the child passes a stool, her skin should be cleaned properly with lukewarm water and a soft, moist cloth, but with gentle hands. Dispose of the baby's stool properly, either throw it into the toilet or bury it under mud. After cleaning the baby, you must wash your hands with soap and then disinfect them properly. Dirty hands can pass on all kinds of infections to your baby. The baby's diaper should not be washed in a river or a lake. To wash the diaper, use clean, running water. Dry the diapers by hanging them on a wire. Do not dry diapers on the ground. This increases the chances of the cloth getting infected by insects and germs. Once they are dry, fold them neatly and store them in a clean trunk. As soon as the child passes urine or stools, the diaper should be changed. After six months of age, you may start giving the child drinking water separately. But remember, many diseases that attack infants come from the use of unclean water. So be careful. The child's drinking water should be boiled for a minimum of 20 minutes and then allowed to cool. Take care not to dip your fingers into the child's drinking water. As we said earlier, for the first six months, Feed the baby only mother's milk. However, after six months, mother's milk is no longer enough for the healthy development of the child. That's why, along with mother's milk, the child should now be given complementary food. Complementary food means food prepared at home. Lentils, porridge, soft fruits, khichdi and green leafy vegetables. Remember, you must wash your hands well before cooking. You can cook excellent complimentary meals at home, like suji ki khir. For this you will need finely ground suji 100 grams, ghee 2 large spoonfuls, sugar or jaggery as per taste, milk and cardamom powder. Take a little ghee and add the suji to it, cooking it till it turns golden. After letting it cool, store it in a clean container. Whenever you want to feed your child, warm some milk and add some of the roasted suji to it. Add sugar or jaggery and cook till it thickens. Add a sprinkle of cardamom powder before feeding it to your child. So you saw how easy it is to cook a complimentary meal for your child at home. But while feeding a child, do remember the following points. For up to two years of age, continue feeding mother's milk to the child. Even after two years of age, the child should be given mother's milk as long as she wants it. Make sure the child's utensils are not infected with bacteria. Before using them, boil them to disinfect them. Before feeding your child a complimentary meal, wash your hands thoroughly. 
Use a clean bowl and spoon to feed the child. Use the same bowl so that you will be able to measure if your child is increasing her feed intake according to her age. Keep feeding the child in small amounts at regular intervals. Babies between 6 and 9 months of age should be fed 2 to 3 times a day. Babies between 9 and 12 months should be fed 4 to 5 times daily. After the child is a year old, feed her 5 to 6 times a day. The child will take its time, will eat in small portions. You must keep up your efforts to feed her. Do not feed the child forcefully or by scolding her. Calmly, lovingly pamper the child while feeding. Children up to the age of one year should be bathed at intervals of two to three days. Use a soft cloth and ordinary water to bathe the child. The child may be bathed in warm water, but the temperature should be comfortable for the child, not too hot. The area where the child is bathed should not be windy. While bathing the child, you should first wash her face. Children's eyes should be cleaned from the center outward. Use a gentle, chemical-free soap and a soft cloth to wash the child. One should generally avoid using oils, lotions, creams or powders. Powder isn't good for the child's lungs. If the child's skin feels too dry, then contact the doctor for advice on the possible use of a safe cream. To prevent the child's body heat from falling, the head should be washed last. Right after the head has been washed, it should be covered with a dry towel. And now, some important points related to the health of your child. Take care that no one smokes in the house. Smoke is harmful for the child's lungs. Play with your child as much as you want, but do not put a finger in its mouth. The bacteria present on your finger can make the child fall sick. If the child gets diarrhea, then she should be fed with more of the mother's milk. She may also be given an oral rehydration solution or ORS and a zinc tablet. ORS and zinc tablets can be obtained from an Asha or Anganwadi center. Rice water, buttermilk or lemonade may also be given for diarrhea if the child is older than six months. If despite all this the vomiting or diarrhea doesn't abate or if the child is getting weak or urinating less or if there is blood along with the loose motions then contact a health worker immediately or take the child to a health center. We follow all these instructions related to the nutrition of children so that they remain healthy and develop properly according to their age. But whether the development is actually properly matching their age, that too is something that their parents should be able to identify. By the age of three months, most babies react to your attempts to talk to or to play with them by smiling. Parents should smile at their children, look into their eyes and talk to them. At the age of six months, children try to move towards objects. Parents should use large, colorful toys to encourage the child to reach out and move further. By the age of nine months, children begin to sit down and to grasp hold of things. One-year-old children start to stand up, unsupported. During this period, you should play with the baby and teach her the names of different objects. If the child does not develop according to its age or its developmental progress is slow, then you shouldn't get worried. Instead, you should talk to and play more with them. Their diet should also be given a lot more attention. If despite this, the baby's development is slow, then you should contact Anganwadi or health workers. If your Anganwadi isn't functioning properly and you're unsatisfied with its health services, then you may file a complaint with your district magistrate. Children of two to three years of age start to identify colors. They can even draw somewhat shaky lines. We hope that your child is doing all this. So, take good care of yourself and your baby so that she grows into a healthy, smart child.